Hey guys, thanks for joining me. In this lesson, we are going to practice our line work and our teardrops. So what I am doing here is I'm loading up my brush. Now, key to having really good line work is the consistency of paint on your brush. So I've dipped my whole um, brush, all the bristles, right down to the ferrule, into my water tub or water well or brush bath, whatever you'd like to call it. And I am just working my way through the paint here. So just going to make sure that there's a good percentage of water to paint onto here. So good ratio. You don't want it too wet, nor do you want it too sticky and dry. One of the main principles that we should learn is that the tip of the brush will give you a fine brush stroke like this. So even though this is a number four low Cornell face painting brush, I can achieve really small brush strokes or I could achieve with the same brush quite a thick brush stroke. It all depends on what part of the brush that you use. So if I give it a medium push down, then I'll get a medium brush. If I give it if I give it a really good heavy push down, I'll get a really thick brush stroke. And that's, I'm pushing it right down so that the bottom of the ferrule is almost touching the stencil here. I do a lot of my line work practice with these um, sheets that you can get. You can get them anywhere at a stationery store. Um, So we also need to know that we can start our brush strokes um, by them being quite thick, by pressing down the brush, and then by moving the brush downward, slowly lifting it up and off the stencil, we get a nice clean teardrop. So if we practice these by going pressing down quite hard, but not too hard, almost touching the ferrule with the stencil and then slowly lifting up as we progress downward. So pressure, medium pressure for a medium teardrop. For a smaller teardrop, small pressure downward. Again, medium and then quite a thick one. That will make all the bristles fan out and get more coverage for that um, particular teardrop. Now also with our teardrops, we can go from thick to thin to thick again, just by adjusting the pressure of our brush. We can also start from thin to thick to thin. I'm thin, barely touching the stencil, medium touching, medium pressing, pressure, pressure, a lot more pressure and then medium pressure as I lift off. So you can make your brush strokes quite long. So I can drag out the thickness of this brush stroke for quite some time before I give it a medium-ness of width and then lift up. If we want to do a reverse teardrop, we will start with a thin line by barely touching the stencil, gradually pushing down, gradually pushing down, and then stopping right there. These are reverse teardrops. You can make swirls before you bring it into a reverse teardrop. You can make swirls as we start from thick and go all the way into thin. 
curl it along. Now with reverse teardrops, um, using the stencil doesn't really do it any justice because there's not much absorbency there. So I will just give you an example on my skin. If I barely touch my skin and then I press down medium, medium and then hard, you get more of a smooth um, reverse teardrop than what we did here on the stencil. As there's a lot more slipperiness on this stencil and less absorbency. So again, if we go from thin to medium, pressing down, pressing down to thick, so you have a thicker reverse teardrop. You can adjust the pressure at the end so you can end with a thicker teardrop, uh, sorry, end, or you can modify it by pressing down with not such a force at the end to make it be um, a medium sort of width right at the end. We can play with shorter teardrops, so starting from thin, thick, sorry, to thin, and having them be a lot smaller. For some reason, when we're doing a sequence of teardrops like these, they do seem to look better in odd numbers. So here we've got three, whereas if we had two teardrops, kind of doesn't look as completed. Thick to thick. We can also do very small teardrops, lifting up quickly. So pushing down and then lifting up quickly. Lifting down, lifting up quickly. A good tip also for uh, line work and teardrop. What I tend to do sometimes when I'm running out of paint um, on my brush, I like to, as I'm lifting the brush off the skin, I like to twist my brush so twisting it that kind of gets right right through every bristle and uses up all of that paint that's on there it's also great to perfect some curls and swells so in face painting a lot of the face painting design work is mainly a series of teardrops and curls and swells that really add a whimsical look to certain designs um, we we can start off with a thin stroke as we're curling the brush we are pushing right down and then as we're getting to the end, as we're still curling into a circle, I'm lifting off my brush, off the stencil. So again, really light here. As we're heading toward the middle curls and then lifting off to make it a lot thinner. Thin to thick, big swell and curl, lifting up as we're reaching the end of the, the swell in the middle. Always when we're doing round swells, start off wide, start off big. Don't be afraid to go too wide. And as you're coming inside the swell, lift up your brush. And if you start off wide, you'll have enough room to fill the middle. You will get a different result with your curls, teardrop swells um, and line work with the different types of brushes that you use. So we've been using a number four Con low Cornell brush. A number six brush will give you a lot wider ends if you press right down to the ferrule. You can also make curls and swells with a liner brush and this is a liner brush right here so the the bristles are quite long and they're quite thin the most efficient way to load your liner brush is to make sure that the consistency is less creamy make sure that it's a lot more watery and um, then what you would normally use so you'll start off with your liner brush like this and just drag it slightly 
you need a bit of practice on how to control the liner brush because the bristles are quite long you've got a lot of flexibility there so it's best to just practice that and so I'm just dragging it it is dragging through it's not like a normal brush a smaller bristle brush where you've got a small air a small area here that you're covering to paint and you're actually dragging the shorter bristles you're dragging longer bristles so you have to learn to control those bristles as you're guiding them these liner brushes are great you can really really go to town with your swirls and curls great practice it's great to really practice these these liner brushes are also fantastic for stars so if we make a little star like this we're going to flick from one point in the middle and then flick out like that and I normally like to do two of them diagonally placed like that or you can have them on an angle so you might want to go squish 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 and there's your design that way and then the other one next to it you can just do one star you can do a star with lots of flicks out so all i'm doing is just flicking the brush the reason why it's so important to get our brush strokes right is because most of the time in face painting we draw a base to sorry we sponge on a base or a background per se um, using just a solid color or a rainbow cake and sometimes we need to define the outlines of certain designs by using line work so we're out we could be outlining a shape outlining a body part or just creating an extra um, just a little bit of character to a crown or um, a child's face so it's, it's I encourage you to grab a brush and a little stencil like these they're fantastic to grab and use them as a practice sheet as they're super easy to clean and then you're able to just go to town practicing on your swirls and curls and brush strokes and teardrops once you perfect your teardrops you will have no problem creating amazing face painting work without that much experience so teardrops are super important make sure you practice them and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions thanks for watching if you got something out of this make sure that you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have any face painting related questions or you need something that you need clarified make sure you comment down below and i'll do my absolute best to share my knowledge with you in the next video i'm on instagram facebook and twitter don't forget to follow me so we don't miss each other for the next one until next time happy painting